Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome back once again to the long drive. At the time I'm recording this, gotta disengage the parking brake. At the time I'm recording this, uh, and I do see the mansion off to the left, but I'm gonna ignore it for now because it's nighttime. It is Christmas Eve, or rather Christmas morning at this stage. And I am very sleepy, and we're starting early with the mysterious lights in the sky. And look, since so many of you have been asking for a more uncut experience with this, of uh, something more like stream of consciousness -y, I think I'll go ahead and indulge you. What is going on with all this stuff off to the side? Uh, and kind of leave this more in an uncut state. What is this all about then? Oh, we're starting to see changes in the terrain. Maybe... Maybe this is the sign that we can dig here? Oh, look, the sun coming up, washing over the grave. Long abandoned until random chance causes someone to happen along. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, that's just the mansion loading out. Okay, let's, uh, let's see. Darwin, do you have the shovel back there? You do. Okay, get, hang on. Give me a moment to figure out the controls again. Yep, and then tab. There we go. Wait. Oh, there's more gravestones out there, it looks like. And for a second, I thought it was just like a lone person standing off in the distance. Okay, can we do something with this? It doesn't seem so. Ah, yes, just digging up a random roadside grave. And hearing a demonic scream off in the fields. Yep, this is the long drive. Uh, after what started as a fairly cozy night, too. Alright, uh, we can drop you at that. And hit the road once more. Darwin, you are looking more and more bent out of shape literally every time I look at you. Uh, but we need to get moving. Now, some of you have been asking for a more unedited, more stream of consciousness -y, just sort of podcast-like uh, style to this. And I think now is the perfect time to really investigate that, although it is sort of throwing me off guard having this crazy engine in here. Almost makes it seem like I can't take my time. And so that's what we'll do for this part, you know? I'll make it more just conversational. I'm sleepy, probably so are you as you're watching this. And I'll just make it feel like you're right beside me in the driver's seat, or in the passenger seat. If you were right beside me in the driver's seat, that would be a little bit too close for comfort. Although, maybe a little bit more fun. Uh, Darwin, you still good? I'd love to have you in the passenger seat, but I don't think that's going to happen. We already tried to negotiate that, and it just wasn't working out. And besides, I think a lot of you do just enjoy seeing the road go by, and I, I, I try to temper that by having it be accompanied by stories or just, you know, a flow of thoughts, but I don't know if I have to be really talking for that to be impactful. Because the road is just a hypnosis, right? I mean, I've talked about that in previous parts. A big part of the joy of driving in games is the fact that you can allow yourself to be put into that trance state that the road puts you into without having to worry about the safety aspect of it. Well, I sort of have to worry about the safety aspect of it because of course I don't want to damage my car. Eh, but this is a Lego car. Pop parts just pop right back on. And we've been in some near fatal collisions already, but eh, as long as we have some as long as we have some water to wipe down the blood from the dashboard, yeah, we'll be A-OK. -okay. Cleaning up blood is equivalent to medical attention in this world. 
Now, some of you have pointed out that there is also something of a story to this game, something that I missed early on. We can get some of the post-apocalypse vibes from the radio, but there's also a note that I missed in the opening house uh, that says that our, our stated goal is actually that we're headed down this 5,000 kilometer road, of which we've barely driven 300 kilometers to go see our mother. Isn't that such, like, a dreamlike idea? The idea that we're driving down this endless expanse in this apocalypse that is scary but doesn't really make any sense? Populated by vampires and zombies who still talk creepily, running into zombie rabbits and zombies themselves, skeletons and haunted mansions. And yet, the road itself is just this one long, continuous thing, sort of representing an unachievable goal. But one which is totally unambiguous, one which is marked entirely by perseverance. There's no questioning what the right move is, it's simply a matter of how long we're willing to keep at it. I don't know, I feel like there's just such a beautiful simplicity to it. And I don't know if it's intentional, but it just makes this game, through all the jank, feel like there's like a, a sort of depth to it. I I'm really inarticulate, and unlike other videos, I'm gonna be leaving a lot of that in and probably not doing a lot of retakes, which I, I do often in videos like this when I, I don't feel like I conveyed what I meant on the first try. But look at this, it's a bright and sunny day and we're just cruising down the open road, watching the power lines and the grass go by, hearing the birds chirp out our open window. And when night falls, we'll be more on lookout, we'll be seeing those lights in the sky, wondering what they are hearing the howls of the zombie rabbits and wondering if it would be a good idea to stop in that dilapidated old diner or mansion. This game, for all its simplicity, just has so much going for it, and I always talk about that in the context of like emergent stories and the cool things that happen when you make decisions that you do. But I also think it is all about the trance state, and even though that's something I've talked about in every video, it's not just about the trance state of the road. I think every factor of this game sort of complements that. I mean, when we go to investigate these haunted mansions, it's just like a dream where it'll take these detours where you're doing something maybe radically different from what you were doing before, but you'll always kind of find your way back to the main track. It all sort of loops in on itself, even in spite of whatever tangents you may take. No matter what we do there, we'll always end up back in the same car, driving down the same road. Unless we can get a bus. If we can get a bus, I'm gonna find some way to, like, hitch the car to the bus and then just ride that down the road. But, you know, keep in mind, this map is persistent. We could, if we wanted, always turn all the way back to our house. We'd have to drive the entire 300 kilometers, but we could do it. Actually, I'm kind of thinking that's probably what we'd have to do if we wanted to repair a bus, right? Because these things often spawn with no wheels, so we'd have to go out and like scavenge for all of those. We're probably not going to find those just in the immediate vicinity. At the same time, there's also nothing stopping us from going really far off-road. It doesn't even limit us in that aspect. It's just that, well, in episode one, we all saw what happens when I try to do that. Oh, there's something up ahead here. And even though we're full up on basically everything, uh, I do think it's a good idea to just stop and check every once in a while. I should actually probably have a look at my needs. I mean, there's probably a key to see that that I just haven't seen yet. Uh, and I do also want to... Eh. I've been saying the whole time I want to replace these doors, but they seem to vary 
in their state of like how they'll attach to here or maybe it was the other one yeah this is the one that kind of doesn't fit right well, let's see what's here Ooh, what are these are these oh these are pieces of cactus we can drink from them but some of you advised me not to actually do that uh, there's another door. I wonder if that one will fit us better. And some oil. Of course, I have to bear in mind that any one of these I could swing open to reveal a zombie right in front of me. Uh, yeah, I don't know why all these people poop on the roof. Now let's see what's on the roof as well. Ooh, a bike. Uh, it hasn't got any wheels. We'll probably hold out for something that does have wheels, but, uh, it would probably be a good idea to put one in the bed, right? Some of you actually suggested that we could use one of these for these off-road excursions. And then again, it's not really having an appropriate vehicle and burning gas that I'm worried about. It's getting lost. Yeah, this is a front door. All right, never mind. Look at us just leaving that trail behind on the road. You know, I'm sitting here in the driver's seat, but this must actually feel really cool for Darwin, you know, the wind in his hair. In the interest of keeping this as unedited as possible, I'm probably just gonna talk about like random topics and not necessarily all relating to driving horror. But you know, I I've recently gotten like reinvigorated interest in driving horror. I have to try beware extremely soon. I mean, years ago I played it on the channel, and I just think it's such a cool concept. I mean, the idea that you're just out driving on this dark and I think maybe raining night, and suddenly you find yourself pursued by a car that you just can't seem to shake. But it's not just a, a chase. You can actually lose them momentarily, but they'll search the area looking for you. And so you'll have these moments where, like, you're just kind of off to the side of the road with your lights off, hoping they don't notice you. Sometimes you can see their lights just moving around in the distance, knowing that they're looking for you. I I've got to see the way this game has come along over the years, because I, I played it on the channel, like, three years ago, and that version was years old then. So, so many of you have been begging me to do it, and I've got to get back to it. I actually just recently played uh, Night Drive, which was a map by YouTuber Spieler for BeamNG. And even that really impressed me. I haven't tried the Liminal Spaces map yet, but uh, I'm sure that'll be really cool too. I, I don't know, just everything recently is showing me that it's a lot more than just the trance-like state of the road that puts you in the mood for horror. There's actually room for a lot of really inventive stories that you could approach in this way. I mean, hey, you're driving. It's basically nothing but approaching, am I right? Yep, this is the unedited experience, folks. This is the kind of uh, hard-hitting material you get from me. All right, right up here. Yeah, I promised that this would be mostly unedited, and it's still going to be, but I really Gotta find my rhythm. Saw you back there. I saw you. <laughs> it's always the slow approach that's the worst part. That tumbleweed was real menacing the way it crept out from behind the building and slowly rolled towards me. And then it rolls back to the pumps. It's like it just asked me what kind I'm looking for. And now it's going to do service for me. That was actually a surprisingly wholesome interaction from the tumbleweed. And an unwholesome reaction from you. 
Well, you know, I say that, but all he asked was what I was doing here, and he slowly approached me, and then I killed him, and he forgave me with his dying breath. So, I don't know, maybe I'm not the good guy here. Or maybe these are the kinds of things that aren't really worth looking into. Uh, oil, we'll probably take that because there's so much of it. Do we have a match? Do we have a match donor organ? Uh, maybe we do. Hang on. This door is in horrible shape anyway, so if we remove it and leave it back here, because I did not take that opportunity with the wire brush, which is possibly back here in this jumbled nest somewhere. Uh, might as well attach this one. There you are. That's not correct. That's not correct at all. Although I can't really see how. Like, how many different variants on this door are there? Alright, well, Rusty McGee it is for now. Yep. You know what? I'm not hurting for anything. Screw it. Let's just ride off into the sunset. I don't need to search every little area. I have stopped for every little distraction along the way. And all I really care about at this point is seeing Mom, even if it takes a thousand episodes. That's the cool thing about this series, is that like with Voices of the Void, I'm back to waiting for more content. But with this, like, three episodes, 300 kilometers, I am nowhere close to reaching that 5,000. And I have, like, nine or ten hours in this game already. I absolutely, if I wanted to do, like, a more podcasty type show, this would absolutely be the backdrop. And I, I guess this is sort of a dry run for that, isn't it? But in the meantime, as I was starting to say before, I'll probably end up talking about topics, just things that are on my mind, not just, like, driving horror. Although the mood will certainly turn as we go into night. Alright, so what are some topics that I could talk about? Um, Alright, so the Arab-Israeli conflict. So, my thoughts are as follows. I'm just kidding. Uh, I just watched a horror movie recently that was really interesting. And this game sort of reminds me of it in its tone, in a very weird, very slight way. Um, it's called Scarecrows. It's from the 80s. And I really love... I've come to really love Tubi, right? I had some, uh, I had some conversations recently uh, with podcaster Jacob Harper. He's a guy who, like, you know, he works in the horror film industry, and he's just a really cool guy. You should totally take it, check out his YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description. I was on there once, um, so if you want to see that, that's also on his channel. And he turned me on to Tubi. Tubi is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's a streaming service that is totally free, there's just some ads, and it's almost like a modern day blockbuster for finding these like random horror movies you've never heard of. And one of them I just watched is a movie called Scarecrows. And I guess when I talk about a movie or something, because I am kind of ambushing you with these, I'll just put a timestamp on the screen to when I'm done talking about spoilery stuff in case you want to go watch it for yourself. Uh, but it's a movie where... Well, it's about scarecrows. It's about scarecrows who kill people, right? That's true from the title. But everything about it is so unique and strange with its premise, and I love it. So it starts off the sort of protagonists and antagonists at the same time are these group of criminals who have just finished robbing the army payroll at Fort Pendleton, I think it is. It's in California someplace. And they steal a plane and they're flying south. They killed several people during this robbery. It went south. And <laughs> it literally went south. And so now they've got to escape. Uh, they've taken the pilot and his daughter hostage but one of them actually backstabs the others. He lets loose with a grenade in the cabin, and he uses the chaos to grab the money and bail out somewhere over a rural area. So a couple more bail out after him, and the rest, like, land somewhere nearby. And what follows is just them on this farm in the middle of nowhere trying to figure out why people keep going missing in their party. And... It's got that 80s cheese to it, but it's also got its genuinely spooky moments and cool ideas. 
Okay, spoilers sort of start here. Um, so, for one thing, it makes really cool use of just the unknown of the lack of communication and the fact that they're all separate from each other. A lot of communication happens over the radio to where, like, one of the earlier scares in the movie is the guy who bailed out and stole the money is walking through the fields and he can hear what everyone else is saying on the radio and he knows they're looking for him. And they know that he can hear them, so they start toying with him. They start saying, like, we got you in our sights. Oh, yep, no, oh, no, don't do that. We can still, use, we can see you still. And he's just getting into a frenzy. He's getting into a panic, thinking they can see him, and running around and going this way and that. And finally, they hear over the radio. He's like, okay, you got me. Like, I'm surrendering. And it's like, all right, I see you. I'm walking towards you. Uh, my hands are up. And now, the two mercenaries who have been, like, toying with him over the radio, they're confused. They're just, like, looking at each other like, we can't actually see him. Like, who is he surrendering to? And it's just such a creepy moment, and it's, like, so cool. Uh, the movie is not nearly as subtle as that throughout, unfortunately. Uh, but I think it's just a good example of, like, the kind of thing you can get up to in a movie like this. And from there, it's very 80s, it's very cheesy, but it's also got some shades of, like, Evil Dead. It's got some shades of nobody acting like a real human, while at the same time, everybody behaves in a pretty smart fashion. Like, for the most part, they hunker down or go on the move as needed. And even protagonists and antagonists will help each other out if it aids both of their survival in that moment. I'm sorry, I'm not used to speaking as if I'm not cutting, and my throat is getting pretty dry. So if my voice is a little hoarse, that's the reason. And I'm also probably going to be a lot more incoherent. That's the danger of unedited. Oh, but we are very hungry and very thirsty. Uh, maybe we pull over for a roadside picnic? And yes, that was a deliberate reference. I'm not sure how much it applies, but, you know, it did it. Alright, let's have a look and see what we've got here. Uh, I know there's food and water in the trunk. Yep, here's a uh, yield meat cube. Uh, I think we need to equip it, which means we can't have this. And... Uh, how do I eat you? I don't... I don't remember how to eat... Eat the meat cube. Oh, you know what? I'm full on poop, so let's uh, just squat on the side of the road here. There we go. Oh, my health is draining. I must have been low on this stuff for quite a long time. I would have died without even realizing it. Mostly unedited gameplay, folks. I could have chosen to edit this out. This is what you wanted. Okay. Now let's just pick our meat cube up off the floor, which we should now be able to eat entirely, thus once again filling up our bowels. And there's a water tank back here somewhere, I just saw it. Is this? There we go. Some of you guys have helpfully pointed out that the cap does not have to be open for me to be doing this. Only the cap on the container you're pouring something into needs to be open. So this is going to help us out tremendously. Uh, just for curiosity's sake, how are we doing on that? Eh, less than halfway. We'll fill up at the next sink. Oops. Yeah, look at that. We drove straight through to sunrise. Uh, there is actually something real gorgeous about seeing the sunrise in your rear view. Seeing the power lines pass in front of it. Seeing me veer off the road because I'm not paying attention to it. This is the open road life. Not time for me to turn off my headlights just yet, though. I'm trying to think. Did I see any other interesting movies recently? Oh, uh, this is one that I watched because uh, Jacob Harper recommended it. And because I was struggling to think of Christmassy topics during the Viscera Cleanup Detail video. 
Black Christmas, the original. Real interesting movie because it's kind of an original slasher flick, like before it was really a genre. And so, for that reason, it has a lot of unbuilt tropes. It's really cool because uh, the killer is very different from other slasher killers, where a, a lot of them are very silent and stoic throughout. This one is almost like a stereotypical gibbering maniac, like a woman-hating incel before that was more common in media, like long before. And it's also unique in that we never really get a good look at him, and we never learn much about him. There's not even a final confrontation. The closest we get is the protagonist encounters him once, has one close encounter, and it's only because she opens a door, looks in, sees two of her friends murdered, and after a very tense scene, realizes he's right on the other side of the door that she's holding open. And that's really creepy. And she goes through this whole, like, very brief chase, very brief ordeal at the end of all of this. And then at the it, it ends with just, it, like, it's, uh, this is the spoiler section. It is of a call was coming from inside the house thing. He's been inside the dormitory the entire time. And it ends with just her thinking the problem has been dealt with, but really it hasn't. And the police leave thinking the real killer is dead. She's actually killed her boyfriend mistakenly because he's been sort of the red herring the entire time. And it ends with her asleep alone in the house. While the camera slowly zooms in on an upstairs hallway closet that we know he's inside. And that is a terrifying cliffhanger ending. Okay, we're still very, very full up on this. And I was a little bit disrupted, thrown off my game, by the fact that I can hear a zombie inside. So, samurai, cowboy, nomad, vampire is gonna go deal with it. I, I just love being able to... Did he just say your mother's dead? So Am I mishearing that? Or did he actually just, like, correctly guess our motivation? I mean, at that point, it's not even a guess. Oh, an AK. I think we grabbed one of those before. I think we already have one. Uh, and sure, I'll take some... I'll take some water. Why not? Wow, that thirst drained fast. I suppose it makes sense. And actually... We should be looking around for some blood. Blood increases our health, and actually I think alcohol does as well. Unfortunately, no such luck. No blood for the vampire. Nomad, it, it's going to be in a different order every time. Just bear with me. Can I just eat some of that flesh? Hang on, let's wade through the poop, because there is some sausage in this dumpster in amongst it. Personally, I wouldn't trust that. Wait, can I not eat this? Wait, attach? Is this just a sausage-shaped, like, ornament? That is so irritating, but we found some AK ammo. So I guess we'll just plop this back here. No, not... I, I don't trust you on the side. Even though this stuff doesn't really seem to bounce around very much at all. You know, listening to all these ambient noises, they're actually quite well done. Maybe there is value in leaving in these moments where I'm just kind of carrying stuff from one area to the next. Simply because it allows you to appreciate the quiet. Because there is a bit of creepiness to this. There is a bit of uncertainty when approaching a new location. But what's really interesting about this as a post-apocalyptic survival game is that it is mostly safety. I mean, you're pretty much totally fine when you're in the car. Your biggest danger is yourself. But I don't know if we'll be able to actually do this the way I want it. Can we... 
Can we move this thing out over it? No. This may not be doable. I guess I'll just turn it on and see what happens. Yeah, you're not really filling up. If I put you here, if I put you on your side, will it still work the way I want it to? No, you're pouring out. Yeah, no, this this is not this has not been a successful endeavor for me. Oh, I hate these controls. Well, look, there is another wire brush here. We dumped out so much of our water. But we need to find another place where we can actually keep it under the sink. Otherwise, this is all totally useless to us. Uh, we may be able to scavenge that rust bucket for parts. Yep. And oil, we don't really need that right now. I don't know if you're the right size. Yep. Yeah, what really makes this difficult to not edit is these sections here where we're kind of doing stuff because it makes it really difficult to struggle with the controls and still keep the commentary going. But if we put you on here, that is an even that is such a bad fit. No. Uh, there's so many there's so many parts that are similar but just don't work. Uh, and now you're going to give me a hard time on top of everything. You know, I am curious, what can we do with this TV? Hmm. Doesn't seem like we can actually change the channel at all. <laughs> Unless we've actually got to tune the antennas. Imagine if we had to do that. Tell you what, I'm just going to pay it forward and leave it right here on the bar for whoever, whoever the next uh, patron might be. I mean, how creepy would that be? You sitting on the chair here? Actually, I could have sworn you were... Oh, okay, you fell down. I was going to say, I thought it moved from right here to over there. That would have been a twist. But yeah, somebody's going to be driving down this road behind me. Just see the one glowing television in the abandoned gas station. But we'd best be hitting the road. You know, all this is reminding me of is, like, I really want to go urban exploring again. It's been so long since I've gotten to do it. I think the last time I did it was actually the lookout. That was back in, like, early September, I want to say. I know it was still very hot out. I got... So, I don't think I ever actually showed the pictures from that. And even the pictures I took were, like, a week late. But when we did that... We were, abs Dan and I, were absolutely swarmed with ticks and chiggers, and it was the worst. Like, covered head to toe in bites. I had to use, like, I, I had to use a washcloth to scrub the things off. Like, a, a pair of tweezers just would not have been done in a timely fashion. There were hundreds. One of the worst things ever. I kind of wish, if we had done it, like, a month later, we would have been so much better off. Right, we gotta slow it down here, because otherwise we're gonna end up crashing. Like, a as soon as I got this engine, it's just been a struggle against myself. But even before then, if you're talking and driving, it's very easy to not pay attention and not even realize that you've been going 120 miles an hour, or kilometers an hour, until the very instant the game asks you to make a turn. Actually, there's a lot of things that it's easy to not notice when you're just out here driving. For example... I hadn't even realized that we had stopped seeing grass and started seeing dirt. Now, I don't know if this counts as its own biome or if we're transitioning to the, uh, to the desert. Yeah, it definitely looks like it.
I actually had a horrible experience recently where, um, so I, I feel like these podcasty type videos where it's just me talking are very similar to the readings because these are the kind of videos nobody's really watching the gameplay, you know? You just kind of put me on for noise. And some people that I've talked to, they almost cautiously bring up the topic that they watch my videos as something to put on to help them fall asleep or just to have background noise or while they're eating. Like, I'm gonna be offended by that. I'm the exact opposite of offended by that. That's a kind of the vibe that I really like to go for with these things. I actually love that they have that creepy and comfy factor where they're comfy if you're not watching and a little more on the creepy side if you are. And I only say that because something really horrible happened to me the other day. So I always, you know, I record these things in the very late hours of the night. I'm also reading them as I'm reading them, you know, reading them to myself as I'm reading them out loud. And so I tend to put myself into a real spooky mood. And so uh, usually what I do when, as soon as I'm done reading them is I go bundle up on my bed and, you know, lock the door and wait for sunrise. And a lot of times, if the stories are creepy enough, I often find myself just looking over my shoulder into the dark. You know, I get that feeling. I'm giving it to myself right now, but I'm also driving, so that's an issue. Um, and something really horrible happened to me the other day where I had already done uh, Creepy Work Stories 4, and I turned... Or not that I turned around. Um, the fact that I hadn't turned around was kind of a problem. Rock in the road. Oh, I always jump scare myself with my own face in the mirror. You okay back there, Darwin? Yeah, sorry, buddy. But all's well that ends well. Anyway, back to the story. Um, I was editing. I was editing that video, and I was getting pretty invested because, of course, I'm listening to these stories all over again. And my door just randomly swings open. It wasn't locked, but it was latched. And that was a poor experience for me. I, I stopped editing for a while and just kind of engaged cocoon mode on my bed. But I feel like that really is the essence of creepy and comfy, isn't it? It's feeling unsafe. And I can't remember where I talked about this. It was somewhere where nobody was going to see it. But it, it's the feeling unsafe, but a feeling of insulation from that danger. And I've said that many times before, but oh, where was it? Oh, you know what? You know what it was? It was someone asked me about the feeling on Patreon, and I replied to them. And in doing so, I accidentally kind of put it in better terms than I ever have before. Hang on, wait. I'm gonna pull over to the side of the road, and I'm actually going to bring up that message just so I can read it to you, rather than try to fumble it out in this mostly unedited video. All right, I I've just looked it up, and basically, I I've always talked about how creepy and comfy is a sense of danger, but an insulation from that danger, I in the same way that a rainy, stormy day is horribly uncomfortable, unless you're sitting on your covered patio in your rocking chair, you know? Because you can watch it happen, you can see the discomfort that you would be in, if you weren't in your little safety bubble. You know, it's that instinct that makes you want to crawl into a hole and hide when there's a storm or when there are predators nearby. But I think there's a little more to it than that in that, look at the way horror movies, right? You would think that objectively, horror movies are about getting scared. So you would think that you would be the most scared if you watched them alone. But no, these are movies that people watch in huge groups, whether they fill their living room with friends or go see them in like a crowded movie theater. And it always seems like it's the biggest groups that are going to see horror movies in the first place in theaters. Now, why is that? I think it's because it's the sense of danger and doing things to reassure yourself from that danger. It's having both of those things present, the sense of danger and the sense that you're okay, or rather, the sense of danger and the sense of relief in a simultaneous package is actually its own feeling. You want the, you don't just want the scares, really. You want the relief from the scares. 
And that's really the essence of what creepy and comfy is. It's crackers and cheese, really, you know? When you combine them, they create something that's entirely new. Creepy and comfy really is the relief that you get. Now, with driving, that's always a mixed bag, because, you know, there is the trance of watching the road go by. That feeling is almost legendary among those who do it frequently, and... Well, it's so ubiquitous as to be at least understood by anyone who's ever been on a road trip. But when you're alone in the car, it's a very different game. I think that's far more on the creepy scale than comfy. J simply because you get the feeling that I'm getting right now, where you freak yourself out with the stories you tell yourself, and you're always just looking over your shoulder, feeling like you're in danger, you don't get that relief. Well, I guess it depends on how much personal comfort, because some of it is subjective. I mean, some people probably would be more than comforted enough by their car as a safety bubble. In fact, that was a weird bunch of poppin'. Whoa! Is that a bus or a sandworm? I didn't know we were gonna be dealing with tremors. Oh, no! Oh my god, that was the biggest start I've gotten in a while. Oh, I just barely saw that guy in the dark running after me. I probably wouldn't have even spotted him if I didn't hear him. Okay, goodbye, sir. And proving that sometimes, in order to prime yourself for the creepy and comfy, you need... You need to have a genuine heart attack. You need to know that that's always on the table as a possibility, and that might be the first genuine heart attack I've had in this game. And well, except for that one giant rabbit appearing in my window at the start when I didn't even know there were going to be enemies in this game. And when you drive at night, you can just hear... Sometimes they cross the road, but you can just hear the rabbits screaming in the distance. It's very off-putting. Kind of thing that makes me want to pick up the pace, but that's a danger in and of itself, of course. Actually, do you remember the Disney adaptation of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow from 1949? or thereabouts. I used to love that movie as a kid. But I think something that I understood about it even early on when I took it at face value is that it's really a movie about panic being the danger and a headless horseman who needs to decapitate someone for their head. But you know, I always got the impression from the way that it's paced that it's really Ichabod's panic to reach the bridge that is his undoing. I think he actually, like, survives and goes on to live a long and happy life in that movie, which sort of undermines the overall thing. But I always got the impression that, like, a lot of it was in his own head. And that he was his own worst enemy in that story. It's really about somebody who's too cool for school being, you know, brought down a peg. And the lead-up to him actually encountering the Headless Horseman... Now, I have not read the original story, so I have no idea how it's meant to be taken or what the original text actually reads like. I'm sure Disney, like, made substantial changes on their end. I'm sorry, I was gonna continue that sentence, but I was just taken aback by the substantial weirdness of seeing, like, just the solid blackness meeting the night sky as we go over this hill. This might be, like, one of the most extreme changes in elevation that we've seen. It's that combined with the fact that, you know, we just had our Christmas Eve party, there's a lot of sugar in me, and not a whole lot of real food. So I'm starting to get the shakes and sweats. 
I might stand up to uh, have something to eat in a moment. But there's sunrise. <laughs> Somebody needs to make a mod for this game. I don't know if it's possible, because I don't know if it's possible to time the soundtrack to the time of day. But I would love it if just every game with a day-night cycle had the daylight approaching sound from Darkwood. I feel like that's something that's like stuck with me for so long. And I think that's like a really cool thing about this channel is that you guys lead me so much to enrich myself by playing a lot of games that I wouldn't normally play. And that has done wonders to expand my horizons because I spend so much time working on the channel that I don't really consume a lot of media these days on my own. Or at least until recently. Recently I've gotten into a workflow that allows me to put out more content and have more free time. And so now I'm really delving into stuff like Kane Pixel's back rooms and just random horror movie finds on Tubi. But before that, like, you guys have gotten me to play games that I would never otherwise have played. Which, you know, by playing more games, I'm having more experiences. And that's really rounding out my ideas of what horror and all kinds of other things can be. And I guess the point that I'm spending a really long time getting to is that every time I finish, particularly a series, I feel like it adds on to not just the character of the channel, but the character of myself. And not just the character of the librarian, but like, you know, the character of me. Like, I, I come away with more things to talk about and influence the way I approach things. I mean, From the Fog certainly influenced the way I approach Voices of the Void. One of you pointed out that, like, you know, somehow, whenever I'm given a base to watch over, I'll end up with two daughters accompanying me in my big chamber. It just sort of, like, builds on itself in a way that's so dynamic and so community-driven. And it's been really cool to see, because I don't come up with this stuff like, Oh, you guys make memes out of this, and, you know, we'll drive the story this way. It, it just sort of happens on its own. And I think The Long Drive is also a game that's kind of, like, ripe for that. My voice is so hoarse. Yep. Some of you guys have asked, I'm gonna finally address this, like, why is your voice so much higher than it used to be? I think it's more or less the same as it's always been. In fact, if you watch, like, my older, older videos, it, like, is higher than deeper than higher again. I think it's literally just comfort with recording. Because it used to be, like, I would spend, like, I'm talking, like, late 2021, early 2022. I would do, like, the, uh, hello, everyone. I would do takes of that for, like, 45 minutes to an hour straight. Because I was just so uncomfortable with my own voice. And when I would hear myself, even if it was fine on the recording, if I would hear myself speak, I would just be totally unable to progress. And it was like paralyzing, it was so frustrating. And I think over time, I've just, it, it's gotten more natural to me. This, I think, will have a sink that we can fill up from. Like, I just recently uploaded the video of uh, The Dead Linger, and in that I showed a clip that I took 10 years ago. And I sound almost the same as I do now, uh, what was I... I left the water can behind. I left the water can in the other place. Well, let's hope, uh, hope de dope What are you, are you the gas can? Probably. Let's hope this place has a container. It's not a huge deal, I can find another one. Yeah, that's something I don't think I've ever talked about on the channel before. There are literally videos, especially especially older ones, where I did, like, dozens upon dozens of takes of the intro for over an hour. And it's not even that, like, there was anything particularly wrong with them. I just, like, couldn't 
stand them. I tend to be a perfectionist about such things. Even now, I'll sometimes get caught in a loop where if I hear my own voice, it's like six more weeks of winter. What about you? How are you for a door? I'm only concerned I can see from, like, the window pattern that you're not right, but I'm just trying for every fit possible. Come on, you. Oh. Uh -huh. Can I place you, please? Oh, uh, no, you're not going to let me. Sometimes you got to find, like, just the sweet spot, but... Some things, it just... It's kind of bizarre, actually, that it won't let you attach certain parts. Simply because, like, as we've seen, it clearly isn't a requirement that it fit perfectly. Clearly not at all. Alright, I'd forgotten we have this magic lamp. Uh, some of you had pointed out that it actually seems to glow in the dark. And so we can maybe use it as, like, a... Yes? We can maybe use it, like, as a light source. We'll have to test that when, uh, when night comes. Uh, but why did I bring this over here? Oh, no, 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 Okay, uh, drop you back off here. Uh, switch to... Actually, let's shoot it. We haven't been making nearly enough use of these guns. Where'd you go? I don't like that one bit. Oh, you... Hmm. You're like the third one of you to run yourself over. Alright, well, if only there was some way to eat you. At the current place in time, we just kind of have to drag you off to the side of the road as roadkill. Alright, my biggest priority right now is still going to be water. There's got to be a container of some kind. I don't want to drink out of the spray paint container. You're a hood. I was wondering if maybe you were some kind of, like, a uh, gas tank. Let's just push the coffin out of the way. Yep. <sighs> there we are. For you a container. If you are, I've never figured out how to access what's inside you. You are. What's in you before we drink you? Empty. Well, we drank something. So that's reassuring. Now, you should be a much simpler matter. Just place you right here, open you up, turn you on. And with a minor adjustment, you should start filling up. Perfect. You're coming with us. You're at least something we can... At least something we can drink from after that massive blunder where I dumped out and then accidentally left behind our only water supply in the desert. Watch us hit a bump and it go flying out. Although the contents of that trailer have been very resilient thus far. And there we go. We've just ticked over to... Eh, just lower the speedometer. 3,401, so that would be 340 kilometers? I'm actually, I, I love hearing people say that they put these videos on to go to sleep. I really like hearing people say that they put it on like when they've made something to eat and they because I really love having videos on while I eat but sometimes it's hard I'm, I'm one of those people where I can't just have anything as background noise but I'll never pre-prepare something like I'll never sort that out before I've sat down with the hot food so I'll sit there being annoyed that my chicken is getting cold knowing full well that I put myself in the situation and I did this entirely to myself.
My go-tos, so like, I also find that my go-tos for like rewatching, because it's got to be a comfort show. I'm not going to watch something I haven't seen before while I'm eating. So like for a while, my wing show was Archer. Uh, for a while, my pizza show was Futurama. Um, I do also tend to associate certain shows with certain foods. That's another like weird quirk. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that. But also, like, certain things have to be, like, YouTubers, like, uh, I Hate Everything is a very good channel, where, like, I'll just put on, like, the Not Disney Collection or something while I'm eating a big meal. Come to think of it, him and Your Movie Sucks, YMS, were, like, my two big, like, COVID channels. COVID, I... I miss COVID so much. Like, yeah, sure, society was shut down and economics were in shambles and people were dying, yada, yada, yada. But that was a great time for just chilling out in pajama pants and nothing else and watching something stupid like Tiger King or just having, like, YouTube playlists going nonstop while I try and sleep. It really was just, like, a content consumer's dream. Oh no, what's happening? I feel like the engine just like stalled out on me. Are we damaged? Well, you guys said that this is the engine overheating. Are we maybe out of coolant? Uh, no, we have coolant. Some of it's oil, which might be an issue. I can see how that may cause problems. I think I noticed that in editing and just never did anything about it. Hang on, let's, uh... Do I have... It should probably be all water, right? Oh. Dumping water in is not actually an amazing idea. We just don't have enough of it. Okay, for the first time, we're facing a real challenge. Uh, first of all, let's see see how we're doing on water. Uh, we're still good on that front. We're worse on food, so we'll have a bite to eat. These, these tumbleweeds just keep rolling in at, like, the most comedically timed moments. We're actually running low on food, too, at this point. We're actually running low on meat chunks. Okay, so we actually kind of have to stop at the next place we come across. Wait, I wonder, oh, it's kind of too late now, but I wonder if you can actually, like, piss on it to cool it down. I saw them do that trick in the original Red Dawn movie, and, like, eight-year-old me was like, I want my car to break down so I can try that. So let's sort of expedite the process then of getting to another place because if we get there during the night, we're waiting there through the night, and I don't really want to do that. I love me my night driving. But it's always so purgatorial when you're in the desert and the sky just turns like that nuclear white like this. Like not even blue, it's just a haze that goes on for miles and miles. Yeah, yeah. You are not doing so hot at all. You also said that that ticking sound is relating to overheating, or rather the cooling down. And there's something up ahead, but it's not something useful. It's just one of those towers. I wonder if something bad will happen if we, like, really allow it to overheat. Is that right there? Is that maybe engine temperature? If I just drift for a while, I wonder if that'll start to go down. Hmm. If I bring it to a stop, what'll happen then? Alright, well, I guess... I guess we... No, 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 This just happened to be a night drive. You'd think I'd have learned. 
That did lower a little bit. Yeah, I think that's I think that's engine heat. One of you probably told me in the comments at some point, but these videos are so, so few and far between that I forgot. And those of you who do know what that is are very, very frustrated right now. I've never understood the point of these towers. They're such weird structures. I have no idea what they do. And you can't seem to climb them on the interior. Uh, I'm, I'm like afraid to push it too hard right now. We've got to we've got to find somewhere to rest. I don't like just sleeping by the side of the road. Actually, if I did sleep right now, it would probably reset it. Like enough time would probably pass, but I just like my night driving so much. And but then again, it's making the scary noise every time I put my foot to the gas. There is something up ahead. Hmm. And I think something funky is going on here. And well, I guess the terrain finally loaded incorrectly, but for a while I was really freaked out because it seemed like it was on like a bizarre incline. Hello? Yeah, I had the parking brake on, you just don't want to comply with that. Someone home? No, there's quite an interesting vehicle left broken down here. But I think we're just gonna, well, first of all, we're gonna dump some of these containers out. Take them with us. Let's just turn these lights on. Oh, there's like front and back lights. Uh, even though I know now that we cannot drain the battery, let's just climb on in the window and uh, shut those oh, shut those off and do it from the passenger seat too which is nice but we cannot climb out from the passenger seat and I guess we'll just sleep in our little safety bubble you gotta have some safe nights huh I just heard a really weird noise. Let's sleep. Now, I imagine the different substances in this game have, like, different properties, depending on what you're trying to do with them. Like, I think I did see an argument somewhere over, like, what makes the best coolant. Uh, but it doesn't seem like this place has a sink, which means it's not of particular use to me. I'm just going to take this can of oil and we'll cross any subsequent bridges when we come to them. I truly am a man of many talents. Let's just leave you here. Have a drink, which, what did I put that in? That'll be... no. That'll be you. Thank you. Wow, why is drinking the thing that takes, like, the longest to replenish? And then again, I guess it is mostly desert driving. I wonder if the biome actually affects it. I kind of doubt it. And we shall, as I efficiently poop on my way to the car, be on our merry way. And yep, as expected, we have no engine heat. Things are progressing as normal, no scary sounds being made by the engine. And we can progress forward onto these lovely rolling hills. It's just the sort of, like, 
almost idyllic nature. Like, it almost seems like something that someone would draw as, like, a comfy painting. Just a single road stretching off into the distance, the power lines beside it to give you some sense that this is built upon and you're not really alone. And a single beat up but faithful car trudging along, carrying, carrying a guest in the back, along with all his goods. And yet it's post-apocalyptic, and there's zombies and mutant rabbits, and what happened there? Yeah, this engine's giving us real trouble. Hang on, I'm gonna get out and see if there's, like, something I can actually see about it. Unless it really is just the- oh, cool and empty now! Cool and totally empty. Maybe it all just combusted. Tell you what, I am going to pour most of the remainder of my water in there. Simply on the- oh wait, did, that's oil. What are you then? Your gas. All right. So I'm going to pour most of my remaining water in there on the assumption that I will be able to find more. This is the kind of thing that uh, ends like a RimWorld run, but I think given how easy of a time relatively this game has given us, I think we'll be able to make something happen. Do we dump all that in already? No, oh, it looks like we did. So now we've got... 0 0.4 liters of water as coolant. It's something, I suppose. Is there any more in here? There is not. Yeah. Pick the pick the podcast the episode to actually start throwing some gaming challenges my way. Cool. That does still look very, very hot, unless, of course, that's not indicating engine heat, in which case, whatever. We gotta get some more. I can see a tower off in the distance. I think, in my opinion, the thing that ties this all together, yep, is just the fact that we're going to see our mother. Like, all of this is so horrifying and yet simplistic in an almost childish way. And it makes me really wonder how much of the jank in this game is intentional and how much is just like a weird happy accident. Alright, now let's see what that did to our coolant. Almost entirely gone. Let's try and get going. We just we need we need to get distance. I mean it's one thing to prefer driving at night, but it's another thing entirely to be stranded on the road at night. <laughs> and just the phrase at night kinda reminds me of like the hash slinging slasher episode of SpongeBob. I'm not even gonna talk about that right now, because I talked about it in one of my childhood nightmare fuel videos. But there's just something, I, I, I think this was actually like really influential on me. I even remember being like really taken by the way he said like, at night. And I said to myself, yeah, at night. Cause I really like, it, it made the night shift seem so appealing, you know? Cause everything's an adventure at night. Or, especially when you're a kid and you're not even supposed to be awake and you're not used to being awake at that time. As far as you know, it's like an entirely alternate reality. And I suppose it sort of is. This is becoming agonizing. And I do not want to wait. And I do not want to walk all the way over to that tower to see if I can find some water. Here you go, we'll give you 1.5 liters. Ah, uh, and now... This is good. Now we actually see all of that uh, heat radiating off. Uh, we can open this and give you just a bit more oil. Why not? Just to keep another thing from running out. Stow you in the back. We've still got some left if we need it. And just give it a moment to cool and we'll see how things look. 
I think I'm getting the hang of this. Yeah, no, but, or well, we won't know until we start it. And yeah, still not great, but not terrible. It'll get us to the next thing at least, right? I'm sure oil is not the ideal coolant. But it's just gonna have to do for now. Somebody's cringing. I actually heard somebody say that blood makes a really good coolant. So add healing properties to that list and you've got a lot of good reasons to stock up on blood. Didn't we find, like, a full drum of blood at one point? I feel like somewhere we did at one of these roadside horrors, and we really should have taken it with us. But we're already... we're already running into problems. I think... I just looked it up, and you are supposed to use water. But I think we're just gonna limp to whatever the next thing is. Of course, it's choosing now to not throw things at me left and right. We should be able to get water just about everywhere. Uh, which we actually really have to because now, like, the worst case scenario has occurred where we bled through this far more quickly than I had hoped and now we have no water and no coolant. Which, you know, being the same thing leaves us stranded and dying. If anything, I wouldn't be surprised if oil either does nothing or just makes the engine overheat, like, much faster. But, like, we're just getting the most useless structures now for finding anything. But at this point, I'm getting desperate. I'm, I'm gonna be cutting a lot of this. There's simply no way I'm subjecting you to this. Uh, I didn't mean to press that, but <laughs> I suppose this is the right game to give us the tools to deal with these situations as they arrive. Oh my god. What button lets you sleep? There we go, V. Alright, morning again. Let's get a move on, and let's keep an eye on how quickly this thing wants to overheat on us. Now, I'm not sure if it's continuing to get hotter even as we're not- it is. It is getting hotter even as we're not hitting the gas. So that really only buys us like less than a minute of driving time even from zero. Uh, there is... There is a ship out there. There is a ship out there. And it contains drums of liquid. Liquid of all kinds. So maybe... If we can find one of water, that solves a lot of our problems at once. And I can't tell if that out there is a building or rocks, so we're gonna stop over here. Problem is, and the real scary thing about these fields is that uh, uh, objects may be farther than they appear. I mean, that was what got me in the first episode when I ended up so far. I'll never know quite how far I went from the road. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. A, a beached barge. Not even in the desert, implying that it was once an ocean, but literally sitting in the middle of a grass field and the one gravestone just in front of it like whatever wreck stranded it here had only one casualty and someone gave them the royal treatment it's all so surreal and yet it, it tells a story at the same time we don't really know what kind of apocalypse happened almost seems like a mishmash of all different apocalypses but it doesn't really matter. A game called The Long Drive understands that all all it needs and all the player cares about is an excuse for a long drive where no one will bother you. Uh, 
finally. Please tell me you have water. Please tell me. I don't really know for sure until we... Oh wait, were you already off? Alright, we won't know for sure until we start checking them. So let's have at it. Uh, gas and oil. Oh right, they can show up in different percentages too. Alcohol. I wonder how alcohol would work. This is going to be the kind of thing that I consult the wiki before trying, because I literally can't make any progress until I figure this out. Diesel, probably not good. Oil, certainly not good. I am taking one of these empty drums with me. That's 100% happening, so we can fill it with water. That tree just scared the crap out of me. I turned around and I saw a long, tall figure standing behind my car. Immediately thought it was someone that had followed me here. I mean, what a fever dream this game is, right? It only stands to reason that after all this, the ups and downs, the whimsical, the scary, that there would be a monster waiting at the end of all of it. Not a drop of water thus far. Nothing. Literally nothing of use here. Unbelievable. What is this, like 50 barrels? I'm just going to take an empty one, and we'll bring it with us so that this never happens again. Oh my god, now we got to make our way all the way back to the road? This is horrible. But at least we cooled it down a little. Look at that, only halfway down. I'm going to start turning my engine off as I'm driving. Uh, simply because leaving it on in any capacity is causing it to heat up. But I can always get up to speed and just sort of drift through the fields. Avoiding the rocks, maintaining a surprising amount of my speed. But I am not going to be one to complain right now. Now let's start turning so that we can sort of merge parallel to the road. And hopefully this whole exercise gets us a bit closer to something I can use. I think this is our maximum efficiency way of doing things from now on. Kind of funny, isn't it, that this is like the rambling stream of consciousness episode where I'm entirely too sleepy for this and I'm just going to ramble. And yet, it's also the one where this game throws the most challenges my way that I've ever seen. But that's the way of things. Hope it's not an omen for the new year. Oh, right, I forgot. This is going to be probably the first episode. Probably going to come out January 1st, 2024. How wild is that? I'm talking to a different year right now. I think the first episode of 2023 was Growing Map 2, wasn't it? Oh, that is so bizarre. It feels like I just sat down to record that one. But anytime I start looking at older videos, it, it becomes such a weird trip down memory lane. Because then I start... never do this. Then I start comparing things based on the point they occupy in the timeline. And it's very bizarre every single time. Because then you start going down the rabbit hole of like, okay, there's no way, there's no way this was at the same time as this. There's no way this much time has passed since that. I remember just doing it. And that can happen on a small or a large scale. I mean, I still have it like permanently anchored in my mind that Skyrim is a game that just came out. Why am I not seeing any buildings? Please tell me that's a building and not just a rock formation. I see what looks like a tower. I think even if it is a building, it's way far out. Uh, thank you, Gods of Downhill. You're really the real MVP right now. For all I know, we burned off all this oil a long time ago. 
I feel like that one episode of Breaking Bad where their RV broke down in the desert. That episode is like, I, I rewatched it recently because Breaking Bad has kind of become my treadmill show as of late. <laughs> Archer's my wing show, Futurama is my pizza show, Breaking Bad is my treadmill show. Um, that episode is like harrowing, even when you know what happens. Like, it's just such, like, a compelling survival story in the middle of this crime drama. It's so weird. Breaking Bad is such, like, a crazy show. Like, it's... I know everybody talks about how great it is all the time, but it really is amazing. Like, it's probably the most, like, consistently great television I've ever watched. Like, The Walking Dead and its associated universe is probably, like, my favorite thing to watch. But Breaking Bad is the most consistently amazing. Okay, we've got to check this tower. There's just, there's no other choice. Please, tower. You're like, these things are like the worst for loot. And yet I'm absolutely counting on this one. Food would help in the moment. Water, absolutely critical. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Stop, stop. I don't even want you on, like, to idle. What are you? Is that just a rock? Please. Oh my god. We need to sleep. We need to sleep so that maybe we'll get a little bit of night driving done. Just a little bit. Just the smallest bit. And hopefully find something along the way. Giving it as little gas as possible. Taking all kinds of health damage probably from our starvation. Not even giving us the opportunity to bleed off heat because this is all uphill so we need the gas literally curving up into the left so we're like bleeding off like the maximum amount of energy possible Oh, hey. This is the first time you showed up in the daylight, isn't it? And now we're rolling backwards, and this is happening, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, screw you. You know, I have a long and storied career with XCOM, but this and Voices of the Void have made me hate aliens more than those games. Oh, come on, you. Darwin's still there, that's all I care about. It's the only thing that matters. I can even see you just like disappearing off into the distance. Oh wait, there's... There's a bus stop up ahead. It keeps spawning the worst structures and it keeps spawning nothing within those structures. Whoa, what are you? Oh wait, no, another vehicle is actually a great, great thing. <laughs> I mean, a tanker full of water would be awesome, but even if you have coolant within your own engine, that would be a huge help. All right, this may be, this may be the solution yet. I am really crossing my fingers about this. Uh, but first, of course, we'll see what's around. Spray paint, uh, what's in the thing? Gas, don't care. Uh, some sort of dial. Hmm. A 
compass. Uh, nothing here. What's in the back? Nothing. Please don't do this to me. Alright, you've got your engine. How do I have a look at it? Oil in there. Water in your radiator. Let's tell you what. We can remove this, right? This could be this could be the break we need. Also, maybe we'll even just take this radiator. It stores 10 liters. Um, if it'll fit, of course. Uh, ours stores, I think, five, I want to say. It's in rough shape anyway. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. But if we just take this out and put this in. Now, that's going to be one more thing poking out. But join the club. It should cool itself off, right? I mean, it'll still need some time. But that should be good. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's like the one thing I don't want you messing with is the trailer. Oh, look at you. You're like a rabid. I don't mean you're rabid. I mean you look like a rabid, like from Rayman. The way your jaw just, like, flops unhinged. But I think, uh... All, all we can do is, like, this is the moment of truth. We gotta get in and see how this goes for us. It hasn't used any of the coolant, but I'm not quite sure about how that actually works. And it's still running quite warm. And we're still building up quite a lot of heat. What if that's not the problem? It's five liters of water that we've got in there. But, uh, oh, come on! Ow. Ow. Everything's still in there. It's got to be locked in place. It's got to be, right? Are we not even damaged? Well, I'm not sleepy anymore. Yeah, no. Uh, in spite of everything, it seems like we actually punched out of that okay. I hate rocks in the road. They make no sense. I don't know if they're an intentional feature or just a bug of world generation, but I hate them. Truly. But yeah, it's definitely not... The problem is not as bad as before. If I had no coolant, we'd be dead in the water already. And it feels so, so good to be moving. Of course, it sort of makes sense that we had no issues with coolant the entire game. And then we did once we installed this thing. Because this higher performance engine probably burns through it a lot more quickly. And it's something that we're going to have to put a closer eye on. Now, while I was helplessly Googling help for this, I realized that uh, what it recommends is 90% water, 10% alcohol. That's the best cooling solution. But in the absence of that, water works just fine. And as soon as we get to the next place where we can fill up on even more water, we are putting as much as we can directly into that drum. Uh, then we'll start worrying about the rest. Wow, I feel like in this part, the terrain has gotten more extreme, hasn't it? Like, there's been a whole lot more hills and cliffs and whatnot. And a whole lot more ambient critters just dotting the landscape. But yeah, I can't believe it's a whole new year. I mean, like, it's just, it's strange to me because right now it's Christmas morning. I'm thinking back to the party my family had on Christmas Eve 2021. It was right after, it was right after the channel blew up and I had just released uh, the six SCP maps video. And I remember thinking like, wow, I can't believe this is actually working. I actually have something to talk about at Christmas when people ask me what I'm up to. And I remember being like, 
you know, I was moderating the Discord while I was there. Not because, like, my attention was being, being pulled away. It was literally just because I wanted something to do. And, like, for the first time, I felt like I had a reason to be there and wasn't just taking up space, you know? Can't believe it's been two years. I, by contrast, do not remember Christmas 2022 at all. Total blur. But then again, like, this whole past couple of years, like, not counting 2023, has kind of been, like, the COVID vortex, hasn't it? Like, it feels like we all were in stasis for a long time, in a period that felt like a long time. But now that we've come out on the other end of it, it feels like no time has passed at all. And yet, so much has changed in the world, and we find ourselves several years older. It is a really bizarre time period that's so unprecedented in our generation. I gotta wonder if the Spanish flu didn't, like, create similar feelings in the people who went through it. So I'm very, very big on history and historical preservation. And I was taking a lot of pictures all throughout COVID. And I tried to get a lot of, like, the small things that no one will remember. And of course, it's very hard to predict that stuff when you're in it. And so I've tried to be really extensive. Maybe I'll show some of that stuff one day. But it's like, you know, obviously everybody's going to remember the shortages and the rules and the mask mandates and the having to stand six feet apart in line. But there are some pictures, you know, I have a lot of that too, but there are some pictures that I'm really proud of. Like, I have some showing in, like, March 2020, like birthday caravans driving by with kids like leaning out of cars and like holding signs and stuff and it's stuff like that that I feel will be more forgotten I don't know, it's just, I find history really, really fun. And, like, even though it was a horrible time, for a lot of people, myself included, uh, I, I do get a certain amount of enjoyment and satisfaction out of having pictures, e even of, like, the stuff that there's going to be tons of, like, material of, of being able to say, like, this was my experience with this. Hello, there is a bus. And it's very, very rusty. But it's got all the wheels on it. I wonder if we can't actually get inside and if the engine will start up. Uh, now, some of you had told me about this. Uh, if we crawl underneath, probably more towards the front, I think this is facing backwards. There may actually be a hatch that we can open and use that to climb inside. Oh, this feels so wrong. I've always hated the idea of crawling under vehicles, but a bus so much worse, especially when I don't really know where I'm going. Uh, how will I know when I found it? All right, here, I bet no. There's just a bit of a gap in this thing. And I certainly don't want to go, oh. Yeah, there we are. Let's uh, stand up, it's got no coolant. So that's a that's an issue I don't wish to repeat. Oh, come on, let me up. How do I, how does one get in here? Ah, we can exploit the seat? No? Come on. Oh, uh, well, whatever we're in. <laughs> I did not expect to find artwork here. I mean, I, I do like it. But I really didn't expect to crawl into this wretched, rusted bus on the side of the road in an apocalyptic scenario and see this staring back at me when I looked up. Okay, so there should be... There should be a bar or something where I can open this, right? 
If there is, I can't see it. <laughs> There's even like a stoplights. We can move it forward a bit. But this I don't think is an experience we want to have right now, which is a bit of a disappointment. What I really need is food, I think. Hang on, wait, is there a coolant in you? No. No such luck, there is food! Uh, we need to void our bowels post-haste by spamming B. Luckily, we're still doing good on water. Uh, but this stuff really puts that to the test. Uh, this is causing us problems. A pamphlet. And some water for us to drink. Excellent. I can't tell if that's a sausage or not, so I will not be partaking. All I know is that we seem to have finally got our needs sorted. Both our own and the vehicle. You know, I I'd come to see this game as just like a comfy driving simulator. But I guess this episode, if anything, if nothing else, has been a wake-up call as to how much of a lifeline these things are to us, and just how bad things get when these simple necessities that are so easy to keep on top of when you're paying attention are taken away. It's moments like that when you realize just how vast the world is and just how far we've come, and just how long we've still yet to go. But it seems that we've finally gotten our next night drive, and I am so unbearably eepy at this point that I feel like I do have to end the video soon. Uh, and I've got to get some food in my stomach, because this is honestly starting to become a physical endurance test. But I'm always down to think about the spooky while driving down a road at night. I, I really like how here... The power lines sort of look more like light poles. We can't really see the power lines themselves. And some of them are just all crooked as the hill turns. I'm sorry, I was just trying to not noisily take a sip of water from my mug. While also equally not noisily, tipping it over and spilling a bunch of water into my case and frying my computer. That would be the cherry on top of this whole adventure, is that suddenly we're doused in water, and it's like the worst outcome possible. Man, this is a lot of uphill. The terrain is so different in this episode. Look at this, it's like we're climbing the stairway to heaven. This is so bizarre to see. And it just gets, keeps getting steeper and steeper as we go. I would hate to try and do this on an overheating engine. The car literally wouldn't make it. I also can't end this video without doing something that I really do not do enough on this channel, which is thank you guys specifically, because literally all this success and all, just all of the opportunities this channel has afforded me in life that I never thought I'd have is all because of you. And like, it's just such a great community that, you know, it's because I feel like I found a niche here where I put words to something that wasn't really talked about too much, but everybody had the experience with and everybody could relate to. And so it's a community that is very, it's a community that's very specific, but just seems to naturally vibe with each other out of that appreciation for this feeling that the channel tries to go for and cast a light on.
Seems like the environment is leveling out here. And that is good, but wait, is there something... Is there something off to our left here? I almost didn't even see. Is this a new... Is this a new type of thing? Well, we're gonna go have a look at this, of course. Oh, look. A dilapidated old cottage off to the side of the road. I think we encountered one of these. Or like a couple in the last video. Yeah, we... Seen these? Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, that was horrifying. There's at least two. There's one! Oh, look at you, our flashlight just barely casting a light on you as you come through the, gla the grass towards us. Okay, we need to bring you back here. Switch to our gun. What was in the dark has been brought to the light, and perfect landing. Let's drag you off. And, nope, come on. We need you with us. And rinse, repeat. There's enough light out front here. Oh, but there's so much darkness because of the shape of the terrain. The lower level is in darkness, and that's the important part. Unless we do a real epic switch on you. That's the good stuff. You guys have been... Busy, I hear something. Oh my god! I spun around because I heard, like, chittering outside, like something was moving around the house. It was directional. And then it stopped the instant I looked at whatever this is. Oh, it's like an AI take on a classic Renaissance painting or something. What have we got here? Gas, oil... None of these things matter when you've got water. I'm not seeing much of use, and as we learned last time, ooh, there is a motorbike. There is a motorbike, and there isn't anything really of use in the upper floors. But what is making that noise? It seems like it's coming from over here. It's like a weird rumble coming from the darkness now, but I just... I don't want to deal with it right now. I am sweating and shaking and at that point where I need to eat something. And this game is just going to make me jealous. So, as the sun rises... Over this hilly terrain, the old house in the middle of nowhere... And some challenges overcome. I, I guess sort of emphasizing the uh, importance of perseverance? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to spin this into a lesson about life and the channel and the journey. Because why not? A and not just a story about carelessly dumping out all my water and then dying in the desert. It it's all been about perseverance. I mean, it it's very much like a battle of attrition that I feel like I've finally started to come out on top of, where when I started doing this channel, I was struggling to put out three videos a week, and now lately, I've sort of been putting them out almost daily. And yet, I feel less stressed than ever, because I just got into that workflow where things just work. And I'm so glad to have finally found that sweet spot, and I'm so glad that you guys have been here for this entire journey and all the changes that have taken place, and... I guess I'll just end this somewhat prematurely by saying thank you for how awesome 2023 has been, and I look forward to all the fun we'll have together in 2024. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. 
If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. If you want to support me on Patreon, that link will be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next year's worth of videos. And don't worry, I'll be trying, I'll be trying the stream of consciousness thing again for the next video I do on this game. It won't be too long from now.